Managing conditional access policies is consistently one of the harder tasks that I and those of you that manage this type of thing have run into as you know, designing CA policies. There's a lot of if this, then that conditions that go into designing policies. And over time, we can inherently build risk in our organizations by having, you know, solved this one problem that then created this gap over here of this other problem. And I've struggled with years, uh, with this for years of like how to help customers that are looking at analyzing their uh, conditional access policies and how to make good recommendations for it. So, uh, a couple, last year, I wrote a PowerShell export tool to help me export and understand policies so I could look at them in more depth. And then this year, I took those same export tool that I wrote and added in some recommendations to help analyze and put different like uh, recs inside of the policies, things that I looked for in a policy, look for I, I looked for in you know a design perspective to make some recommendations for it. So I wanted to make a video here today to share that with you and walk through some of the design things that I look at in CA policies when I'm analyzing other you know, policies out there in the world. So um, come along and let's take a look at what I built. If it helps you, awesome. If not, pretend you never saw it. Uh, I'm Doug and this is Doug Duck Tech. Uh, let's dive in. All right, so what I built is a PowerShell export tool. I was kind of inspired by the Orca tool. I really love that tool for Microsoft um, for many years and it was awesome. And so I just built this same kind of thing and it was kind of just a, a side project of I wanted to practice coding. Is This is all stored on my GitHub. So if you go to GitHub and CI export under Doug S. Baker, uh, you'll find that there. And then the script in question is this export CA policies with Rex policy, and you can run it and check it out um, and use this in your environment. When you run the tool, what it's gonna output is this set of recommendations for you. You'll notice here at the top, there's a change view button, and this will take you to kind of a grid export view of your policies. The meat and what's new is essentially is this extra recommendations check that I added to my policies uh, or to the script, and this is looking at key things that I kind of want to see in most customer environments when I'm doing audits for them of looking at holistically what they're doing with CA. Um, and it just comes in and provides you some of those kind of quick check things. So uh, if it helps, awesome. Uh, a couple things that I, I'm gonna just run through the list of things that I'm checking for and a couple of other features that are built into this. So um, the first thing I'm always looking for is gonna be legacy authentication. I know it's an oldie, but a goodie still. I wanna see that you have legacy authentication under control, locked down in some way. And so it's coming in and it's looking for, do you have a CA policy that does it? I went and added uh, as many KB links as I can into it. And so you can come over here and you know click over to this and look at you know some recommendations on how to design that policy. It's a lot of it's taking from Microsoft Rex, but just kind of putting it into this grid view. Microsoft has a lot of great docs out there on this stuff, uh, but sometimes it's hard to sift through. You also notice here, here's linking to everything. So if you see on a policy that, that you know it's in here and you wanna hop into it and say, okay, maybe I need to make a change to this, or maybe I need to enable this policy, you can always link to your existing policy and it should take you directly to that. Um, green is good, right? And uh, you'll notice you know, it's checking both that you have something that's covering this policy and the specific policy is enabled in here. You'll notice if you have it in here uh, and it's disabled, it'll give you a little bit of a warning, but it's still checked to say, hey, this meets this requirement here and you can kick over to it. Okay, so that's kind of the, the normal tool. From a check perspective, the second thing I'm looking for is do you have an MFA policy that targets all users in all groups and all crawlout apps. Uh, this is a little bit of a different change for a lot of orgs. Um, you should target kind of a baseline of everything and then make exclusions where you want it to. The reason why is as Microsoft adds new things all the time to what is available and authenticated inside of it, you don't want to have gaps. So if Microsoft adds graph and you know they can get into a hacker can get into graph and you're only targeting Office 365 or some other new thing that Microsoft adds, it might be a gap that you know causes a compromise. So to be better with this, you want to target and kind of all of these kind of top level things and then make exclusions from that in there. And so that's what we're checking for that. 
Next, I'm looking for some policies to start manage specific types of devices. So a policy to manage mobile devices, MDM or MAM, looking for those type of policies. So you can start doing more enforcement of that device, control over the data that leaves that device, control over what type of device is allowed to access your environment. Same thing, but looking for Windows or Mac. Really would love to see device-based authentication in most environments in here. And you can see that that's what we're checking for. You should have two policies. You should have control over all of the devices that you're allowing to access, kind of making them kind of more corporate-ish. And that's what we're doing with these type two type of policies in here. Okay, and we're checking for that. Next, uh, MFA for admins. Admins should have their own MFA policy targeting them, right? So if someone accidentally gets added to global administrator, you can come in. Ideally, you're doing stronger controls than just MFA. And that's where this recommendation down here is gonna actually step up that. And so require fish resistance MFA for those admins. YubiKeys, hello for business, something along that lines. You wanna start increasing that or put other controls in place to require admins in this. Uh, to be coming from a, a stronger perspective, not just the head of MFA to get into your environment. Okay. One of the other things that I've seen a lot inside of my conditional access policies when I've been analyzing customers' environments is, well, policies that exclude the same thing it includes. So I built a little bit of a check to try to identify that thing, right? And so in this case, here's an example. I was requiring MFA on Android, iOS, and Windows phones but I also excluded those type of devices from being this conditions builder. And if you do something like that, well, this policy is not gonna do anything. And it's hard to identify those sometimes when we're just looking at it. So those are a couple of the things that we're checking for on those policies. Same with groups, same with applications. If we're excluding an app that we're including or excluding a group that we're including, it's gonna be a bad day. And so we're checking for all those things inside of this policy uh, because it, it happens and sometimes we're going to test certain things and we forgot to remove that test and we have now a gap that we didn't even know about. Next, I'm looking for any policies that don't have users in them. If you have a policy that requires MFA but you forgot to target an end user or again, you had to remove it for some testing purposes but forgot to add it in, well, it's not doing anything anymore. And so that's what we're checking for in this next check is, hey, is anything like that out there? Uh, in here, we're also going to look for direct user assignment. Um, this isn't really Microsoft best practice, but this is maybe just a Doug preference. Uh, I like it when uh, we use groups to target our users. I really try to avoid adding named users directly into it just because it becomes messy. If you're telling help desk, oh, just go to that CA policy, exclude that user that's having a problem. Well, that's a lot of inherent risk if someone is going updating our CA policies regularly uh, to exclude a user or include users directly in that CA policy. So try to use a group in there to exclude those type of things. Okay. Um, risk-based sign-in policies or risk-based access policies, fantastic, super helpful in here. And so we're checking for that. And there should be technically two policies. You should have a user risk policy and a sign-in risk policy in your environment. I'm not specifically calling out those, but this policy is looking for that in here. So when you're looking at it, I don't require both in this check, but you should have two, okay? Next, some newer compromises that I've seen out in the wild is the hacker hackers using device-based device code flow. Uh, and this is a way for someone to register a device or authenticate with a code to a device. And I've seen hackers try to fish end users from using it. You wanna be careful when you implement this. Sometimes that can, you know, devices that you need are using it. And I've seen sometimes in my audit logs that this doesn't always show up that devices in my environment are using it. So be careful for it. If you have like a lot of Teams phones or conference rooms, it might block if you block this outright. So you might need to exclude that. But you as an organization should have control over this. Locking this down to only approved people should be using device code flows to access the environment. And then MFA for enrolling a device in Intune. You don't want someone to just be able to enroll any device in their Intune. And so here is a policy that's coming in and looking for, is there something like that in the environment? Finally, um, I added this one later. That's why it's so far down the list, but it's related back to that device-based uh, controls. If you have people that are supposed to all be coming from a Windows device or a Mac device or a you know X, a mobile phone, they should be only using those devices. They shouldn't have this unknown type of device accessing your environment. So that's what we're looking for in this policy is, 
hey, we all of our end users should be coming from these set devices. Um, well, if they're not, let's just not let them access our environment. If there's something wrong with it, or in most likely cases, a hacker using it, it's gonna come in and you know allow you to check that. So that's what we're checking for in these policies. Again, these are just some of the things that I have been looking for and I could you know add into that to help with people out there. And then on this final page on here, you'll notice there's a couple of, you know, this full export view of all of the different policies that are out there. And you can see uh, the idea with this is this is to help you analyze those policies, look for different gaps inside of your environment. Um, I added some, you know, hovers to help you identify that application ID so you can go grab that and figure out what this thing is and target it. Sometimes I've struggled with finding what the application ID is. So I just built it in the tool. So it can do that. And you'll notice here, I'm also exporting how many users are in a group. So CAMF exclude has four users in it. And so that way you can see quickly like how many things are in each of these policies and looking at them. So um, that's the script. Um, if this helps, let me know. If you have recommendations on how I can increase or other things I can look for and add in that you would find helpful, happy to add that in. Um, but yeah, I figured I would share some of the stuff that I've been doing and hopefully it helps you out. So um, thanks for tuning in. Good luck and stay safe out there.